Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be looking at uh, the game we're making for the Summer Slow Jam. Uh, so this is a collaborative game uh, and what we're going to be needing uh, is uh, fixing the camera system because right now it there isn't one. <laughs> so you can just kind of walk off the screen and you're, you're gone. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly give a quick intro into this game because nobody's seen it yet. Uh, I've teased it a little bit on Twitter but other than that this is about it. Uh, so this is going to be a mixer game uh, and what I mean by that is this game is going to run on one computer uh, so like it would run on my computer uh, and I'm currently controlling it with a Xbox 3 or Xbox One controller that's going away sort of uh, so there is going to be no input controllers accepted by this game instead you are going to uh, stream this game up to mixer uh, so Mixer gives you about 200 millisecond lag time, uh, which is almost real time. It's just on the edge of being kind of annoying uh, for lag, but I think it's it's close enough that I kind of want to just try and see if this works. So it's a top-down shooter, uh, and effectively what will happen is you will have connected, you will have pulled in your, your player, you'll have your remote, uh, and it, that will just sort of place you into a queue. In that queue, whoever's up gets to go next. Uh, and you go until you die. And then the entire idea is all of those other people want to play, so their goal is to kill you. Uh, and they do that through uh, chat interactions and things like that. So, yeah, it's kind of that dynamic. You want to sabotage the people who are currently playing until you get in and then avoid the sabotages while you're playing. And then it just keeps going. So, yeah, it's just a basic top-down shooter. There's up, down, left, right. Uh, and then you can rotate and shoot. Uh, spent way more time than I should have on the visual effects. Uh, and it's it's the pixel shader we have, we made from that image effect. Uh, and then it's actually, the character is actually sprites. Everything else is normal mapped uh, objects, just using the standard shader. So they're actually just using a classic white shader with normal maps. So the walls are brick textured. Uh, and everything else, these cubes on the ground, are just cubes on the ground. And that's that's it. They're just randomly rotated, and they kind of just stick around. But yeah, that's where we're at right now. I, I really like the art style. I don't know how well the there's a, a like noise effect going on. I'm assuming that that is going to just make all video encoding hate me. Uh, so we'll see if that stays in or not. But I don't know. What we need is we need a camera to follow them. Luckily, uh, Unity actually gives us that. So this is actually straight from Unity's documentation, and it's got how to cut what distance you need in order to get something into the, the frustrum, in order to get a frustrum height of a set value. Uh, and so that, if I go here, where's our camera? There it is. So this giant box that is getting drawn, that's your view frustrum. Uh, and uh, effectively what that is, is there is a matrix behind the scenes that is actually calculating all of this uh, and figuring out how to actually scale things at distances. Uh, it's all done with a, a relatively interesting matrix. Uh, I won't get into it, but yeah, it, it modifies how things look. And so you can see this kind of spreads out, so there's no easy way to do it. Uh, in order to be able to see the sides of this, I had to use a, a perspective camera, which made this more difficult. Uh, if you're using an orthographic camera, it's easier, because the height is actually hard-coded into that. Not the case here. So we actually need to do some math. And so that's what Unity is giving us, is we have this. And so... Uh, effectively, uh, there may be more than one character, otherwise I would just have it follow the character. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, given these four points or whatever, I want to keep all four of those points on screen and move the camera to the best position for that. Uh, so that's what we're going to be making. So uh, let's get started. <laughs> let's see here. Let's just create a basic camera thing and move the mic out of the way. So let's call this just a a smart camera. Uh, and effectively it's going to have a set of followed points. 
Uh, and then those followed points will construct whatever, and it will figure out the best point to get to it, and then we can give it... For now, we might just have it move automatically, and then I'll add like a lerp or something to make it smooth, so it transitions smoothly to that point. Uh, so if you start moving really fast, it will take a little bit longer, but that's uh, next. So let's give it some transforms of the followed points. So that'll be our followed points plus I'm going to give it some padding. Uh, so effectively what we're going to do is we're, from those followed points, we're going to construct a, a rectangle and then I want to extrude it out additional amount. Uh, so we have like two meters or whatever extra size. Otherwise, like if we have just one point, uh, the distance is zero and that's not good. So uh, let's uh, let's call this the border and set it equal to like five. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. We'll, we'll figure that out. But now that we have that, we need to calculate a rectangle. Uh, actually, we don't. We just need to calculate the height uh, because that's really what we're measuring here. So float height. Or better yet, we can do this. We can do this in a better way. Let's do float min y and max y. Uh, so the min y is going to be from our followed points. We want to order by. Uh, so this will be in ascending order. So the lowest numbers are going to be first. Uh, so we just want to order by the uh, point. Uh, don't use the Java thing. That won't work. Point dot position dot y. And so this is going to get us the minimum y position. Uh, we're going to want to do this for x too, just so we can have an, an actual position to move to. But that's that's fine. <laughs> So with this, uh, that's going to return a list. Let's get the first one. So this is going to get us the first position. Uh, it won't work because I need a select. That's returning a transform. Uh, let's just select out the point position that y. Uh, we're going to need to pull that out. There we go. So effectively ordering things, grabbing the first one. Uh, and then selecting that position. Uh, and that's actually not the best way. We don't need to transform all of those. That's just extra work that we don't need. Let's just do that. Cool. And then let's do the same thing for mit or max y. Uh, and we want to order by. And then the difference here is we're just descending this now. And then, oops. Copy and paste and do this for the X and or the X. Uh, stop. There we go. So min and max X. And then we just need to swap this out for X's. I would really appreciate IntelliSense not popping up when there's only one value. That would be fantastic. All right, cool. So now we have the min and max X and the min and max Y. Uh, so this transform.position.x becomes min x plus max x divided by two. Uh -huh. So just taking the mean or the, the average of them. Uh, we're going to need that. There we go. It's not going to like me setting that. That's too bad. Hmm. Well, actually, let's not do that yet. Let's float. Uh, let's give it a target x. So this is going to be where we're aiming at. Uh, and we could probably store that as a, a vector. Yeah, vector3 target uh, and set that equal to a new vector3 of just 0, 0, 0. So that'll be that. Uh, and then target.x equals that. There we go. So that gets us our x coordinate. So we have this. Now we need our min y. Uh, and that is actually just going to be the same thing. Min y plus max y divided by two. Uh, let's make this floating point stuff just so we don't get any uh, issues with random numbers not 
uh, dividing correctly. It shouldn't be an issue because those are floats, but uh, this way everything just stays floats. The hard part now is we need to calculate the depth. Uh, and so what this has to do is given uh, the math absolute value of max y minus min y. So given that, we need to know what the border is. Uh, border times two. Sorry, getting distracted. We need to figure out what the depth of the camera should be. Uh, so given these or this value, given the height, the expected height we want, we need to plug it into this handy little formula that Unity has given us to actually calculate that distance. So we should be able to do that by just building a function here. And so we have the height, uh, expected height, like so. And then we have the camera field of view. We don't have a camera yet, so let's grab that. Public, uh, do I, hmm. we can do it this way. Uh, so this is going to require us to actually assign that camera, which will work, but it's not necessarily the best. Uh, and then everything else should just stay the same. That should be good. Now let's return that distance. And this might be inverted, so we may end up going on the other side. Uh, but that should be everything we need. It won't be smooth, uh, but it should give us at least a camera follow. Uh, and it should be configurable to be at a specific distance from the player. So things may move around and I may need to tweak some values, but if I just drop that there, uh, assign our camera, and follow our player, Let's see how this works. So this is just a one person test, just to see if this works. Gonna go with, oh, ha, of course it doesn't work. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, we set, we set this target. This transform.position equals target, done. Okay, that one will actually work. Uh, I don't know why Unity isn't saving that file right now, but whatever. <laughs> So once this starts, come on, there, oh, yep. So we are on the wrong side. You can see we have positive uh, 18.6. If I go, oops, to negative that value, we get sort of what we would expect. Obviously the border is huge, but that's, that's fine. Is that fine? That seems really long. Actually, no, that, that seems almost almost correct. Because uh, those are one unit, so one, two, three, four, five. Seems almost double what I, oh wait, we're measuring by height. Ha, so it'll be, it'll be five up and down. Not, we're not taking into account the X's. Uh, so that's something to consider if you're implementing this, is this is taking only the min Y and min X, not the other way around. Uh, let's see here. Let's, uh, for this, it doesn't matter. We can just invert that camera or invert that result. And then I think three, three height should be good. We'll, we'll, I'll have to play with this on my own time, but uh, that should give us sort of a good example. And hopefully it will follow us around and we can do yeah. Okay. So this is this is more like what I was expecting. We kind of get followed around. This should be exactly on on us. The hard part is going to be what if uh what what if I want to track something else? Like say you have a boss, for example, or in this case, say you have a part of the wall that you want to track for whatever reason. We can uh, calibrate this to always keep that, so cube 7, in frame. So if I just drag that over there, we have our player still, 
but we also have this cube seven. So that bottom left corner of our screen should always be revealed. Uh, so the camera should be kind of in between the two. And it is. And as I move, it kind of pulls and pans out. Uh, and then as I get closer, it comes back in. Uh, and so you can you can play with this if you want to like add a lerp so that this calculated target kind of smooths out. Uh, I can actually demo that really quickly with just a vector three lerp. Do something like this with uh, transform position as the origin with the target and then just a time delta as the amount of smoothing we're going to use. And so with this, it should slowly kind of blend. Uh, this is not a configurable blend or anything. It's not the best approach to this, but it will kind of give you that more smooth camera. So as you like add players, it would kind of grow to allow them. And you can see as I move further and further away, the camera kind of catches up at, over time. So yeah, I think this is cool. I think this will work for what we need. Uh, so this is probably where I'm going to leave it. Uh, you guys can certainly take it further. I'll, this code will all be open source on GitHub. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming this starting Tuesday. Uh, I have some other things that have to happen just as work stuff. So I can't live stream until Tuesday. But then we're going to pick this up. Uh, anything that is interesting prior to that, I'm trying to record. Uh, I don't know when it'll get posted. I don't know when this will get posted. But hopefully hopefully sometime soon. So yeah, if you guys have ideas for how we can improve this or add some extra interactions to this game, uh, I'd really like to hear it because it's that's sort of the entire point of this. It's kind of a, a back and forth thing. Uh, so if you guys want to throw ideas out or just have feedback, let me know. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys hopefully Tuesday uh, or in another video. So until then, see you internet.